Hello, and thank you for joining us. My name is Jim Marone. I'm the account manager that works with our government accounts at Advantage Technologies, and we're pleased to welcome you to the latest webinar from Advantage Technologies, Right Facts for Government. Jeff Kunstler, our Vice President of Technical Services, is going to walk you through how Right Facts can help save you time and money while keeping your documents safe and secure. Jeff has over 20 years experience working with Right Facts, and many of you have worked with Jeff in the past. I'll now turn the webinar over to Jeff. Thank you, Jim. As Jim just mentioned, my name is Jeff Kunstler, and I'm excited to be hosting this presentation. I know I've worked with many of you before in different Right Facts projects, and I look forward to working with you again in the future. First, I'd like to tell you a little bit about Advantage Technologies. Advantage is a leading provider and integrator of Right Facts, Cloud Facts, and document delivery software for over 22 years. We are one of the few open text partners to be recognized as an authorized support provider, also known as ASP. Our help desk is based out of North America and is fully certified. Our global customer base includes Fortune 100 companies, major hospitals, and government agencies. And we were recently awarded the Open Text Value Added Reseller of the Year Award for 2021. We are very proud of that award and, and we beat out over 2,500 partners. Next, we're going to begin walking through the core functionality and add-ons of WriteFacts. We will discuss how integrating with WriteFacts can improve security, streamline workflows, and increase efficiencies within your organization. OpenText WriteFacts transforms document delivery workflows to enhance user productivity, support digital transformation initiatives, and provide flexible faxing tools. WriteFacts has multiple tools and applications to give your users access to fax from anywhere. The web-based WriteFacts fax utility will even run on a tablet or smartphone. WriteFacts channels can be scaled up or down based on the capacity requirements of your organization, and we can help determine if you are using your WriteFax system to its capacity. WriteFax has multiple ways to securely route a fax, including tamper-resistant delivery to a network folder, delivery to email, or even directly to an application using an API call. These methods guarantee an accurate and secure delivery of the document. In government, security and high availability are both extremely important. WriteFacts offers all the tools to ensure your data is secure and your service stays up and running. WriteFacts provides JIDIC certification to ensure compliance with the U.S. Department of Defense interoperability and security standards. I'd like to briefly go over some of the new modules that can help keep your data secure and your WriteFacts system up and running. The encryption module will encrypt all faxes at rest. It uses triple DES, 192-bit security, and will protect against data breaches. The SQL storage module gives you the ability to store fax images in SQL, which simplifies redundancy and security of your data. And the new Secure FOIP channel option allows you to secure your faxes while in motion. For high availability and disaster recovery, your right fax environment can be set up in a multiple node, active, active, collective. Multiple nodes can be installed in multiple data centers to protect against catastrophic failure at a data center and can also distribute workloads. A WriteFacts collective in combination with a redundant SQL backend can ensure uptime and also increase scalability. A WriteFacts collective is the best solution for true high availability and disaster recovery. Since you can have up to 12 WriteFax application servers geographically located in multiple data centers, you can truly load balance all WriteFax services and network connections. The biggest challenge with a collective is the replication of SQL and the WriteFax images. As you can see from the diagram, all of the WriteFax application servers are connected to a single SQL server and image store. WriteFax 20.2 does have the ability to write images to concurrent image stores, but it cannot write to concurrent SQL databases. So it is important to have a solid SQL replication plan in place to eliminate the single point of failure.
Virtually any application can be integrated with WriteFax. We have pre-built connectors for several MFPs such as Xerox and Rico, and any applications that we don't have a pre-built API, we have middleware that can be used to integrate it with WriteFax. Our support and professional services team can work with you and help decide the best way to integrate WriteFax with your applications. I will now do a brief demo. The demo includes sending faxes from the WriteFax web utility and multiple ways you can retrieve the fax. Okay, so let's begin the demo. So as you can see on my screen, I just have a Windows uh, workstation up. On this workstation, I have the WriteFax clients installed. I have Outlook installed. I also have uh, access to uh, Google Chrome, so I can show you the web client. So let's bring up the web client first. So I have a shortcut here. I'm going to click on it. And as you'll notice, it supports single sign-in. So it brings me right into my own account. These work with CAT cards. So um, any of you that are using government-issued CAT cards will automatically sign into their fax box under their credentials. And from the web client, you will see a little bit of histories of the faxes that came in. I have the option of clicking on one. We'll take a look. So let's look at one that came in on May 24th. Comes in on its own embedded viewer. From this viewer, I have the ability to do some things like rotations. If a fax comes in upside down, you can do a rotation so it comes, you know, comes back straight up again. I could zoom in and out. If it's a little hard to see, we can always zoom in. You can move down to multiple pages. Uh, pretty nice. Other things you could do from the viewer is you have some annotation tools, and these tools can be turned off if you want your faxes to come in as read only and you don't want end users being able to mark them up. We can remove this toolbar here so there are no annotations. So I'll show you how to do a redaction here so I can actually highlight my name here and cover it up if I want. That's one. I can add a stamp. Maybe I want to sign my signature on the fax. So I have the ability to select a signature and signatures can be set up on a user or group level. So only certain people have access to certain signatures. So I can hit OK here. Decide where I want to put my signature. I can make it a little small if I want, move it around. I have an underline tool, a drawing tool, pretty, pretty nice stuff. And what's really nice is once you redact or annotate a fax, you do have the ability to go back to the original version. So once I save this, I can actually go to the version of the original and see what it looks like. And before I do that, I also want to show you some other things you could do. Like from view, you have your full history here. So you can look at the history of the fax, which includes not just the transmission record. I would say any fax machine or fax server out there will have a transmission record. And ours is a pretty complete record. We also include A and I, which would be like caller ID. It stands for automatic number identification. So the phone number it came from. The remote ID, which is sometimes the same, sometimes not. It's how you program the fax machine or fax server that sent it. And then very important, did it fail or succeed? What happened to the fax? So this is saying it came to Jeff with this inbound route code, and that's why it delivered it to me. And then after the transmission record, you have an audit trail, basically. It's like the life of the fax. So you have at 137 and 39 seconds, it was converted into a image, a TIFF image. It was OCR, which in our system we have it turned on, so it does optical character recognition and actually turns the image into a text-based file that can be edited. I do send a copy. This is the forward here. I send a copy to another user called Netter, and I do this so I can deliver the fax to a network folder and also deliver it to my email. So in this workflow, the fax comes in. It delivers a copy to a network folder, which I'll show you. It also sends a copy of the fax to my email. And then there's the life of the fax. Everything that happens to it is audited in this history file. So when I viewed it and partially viewed it, it tells me that. Now, if I close this out now and I close this fax and save it, you will see uh, even more in the history. So I'm going to go back into it again. So I'm going to highlight it, double click. It's going to come up in the viewer again, and you will see the annotations. Now, here's my versioning. I can remove the annotations, go back to the previous version. I also can go to my fax, oops, sorry, view history. 
go to the current view history and you will see the history now grew so now it shows I viewed it at 211 I viewed it again at 215 and there's my annotation so that was when it was saved so the history file is live and it will keep growing as things are happening to the facts it's it's a real life of the facts audit trail all right so let's get out of this I'm gonna close it and I'm gonna show basically how to send a fax so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click new and it brings up a dialog box for faxing dialog box you put the fax number the destination it does have a history of all the faxes I've done the past six or seven so if I put in this number here which is my personal fax number you will see it delays for a second it finds a match in my phone book so any one that has 212-710-5098 in my phone book will come up and I can choose and the reason I would do that is it'll continue to populate fields for me so there's my name if I open this up there's my voice number company name these are called billing code fields billing codes can be used by you to customize your metadata so you can actually put base name DSN number anything you want and any information you put here will be part of the fact so not only can you do searches on these fields later but you can actually add these fields to the cover sheet so you could do regarding and then anything you put here will show up on the cover sheet so it's just another way to customize and make it easier to search and find faxes based on data later on okay you can add a note here so this will go on the cover sheet we can add a file an attachment and there's two types as standard I'll call it the paper clip attachment where you would click a paper tip a paper clip and attach any printable document in this case I'll, I'll just add a, a small PDF so there it goes it lists it as an attachment we also have a library documents a library document is the same it's an attachment the difference is instead of having to browse for it it is in a library that you can post on a group level so different groups can have different libraries and now it makes it very easy to add an attachment now instead of having to browse for it I just check it hit OK and it becomes part of my attachment list very easy on the right here over here we have the ability to change different cover sheets I can use my standard one here take take a look at it before it goes looks good that's my logo that's the cover sheet I want to choose I can add a comment for the record a comment will not travel with the facts you can't add this to the cover sheet but you can use it to look it up later to see what you wrote and from information here here here's a pre-populated from Active Directory so during our Active Directory integration we will pull in your username your um, fax number if it's in AD your voice number and other things that could be put in Active Directory can be moved to these fields I can add an overlay maybe the word copy to every page I can change the priority if there's a queue in other words you only had let's say two channels and there were a bunch of faxes waiting to go out you can then add it to the queue I can also hold for preview when I hold for preview what it does is it doesn't send it it'll create the facts and then notify me my fax is ready for a preview so I can do that here and I think we're ready so we have a couple of attachments we have our fax number we have our overlay the word copy we're previewing it and our cover sheet was set up up here and hit send and you will see a fax is getting ready to be sent so it's updating and then you will see waiting for conversion so right now writefax is creating the fax it is converting it adding the cover sheet adding the attachments and getting it ready to go okay as you can see it just updated it and now it is held for preview so it is converted and it's ready for me to approve so what I'll do now is I'm gonna double click on it make sure it's exactly what I want cover sheet looks good the fields are populated I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see the note you can see my email just told me my fax is ready for previewing so if I didn't want to wait maybe it was a very large fax a couple hundred pages I can continue working and wait for the conversion to finish and tell me it's ready for previewing So I can close this up I'll zoom in a bit okay it looks great I can slide down and look at my other pages 
So there's my attachment. That's the library document with the copy overlay. This is my attachment, the PDF file that I was sending. Basically, the PDF was another fax. Okay, and this looks good. I will go fax and I'll go status and release. Once I release this fax, you will notice that now it's waiting to be sent. So right now it's going and handing it over to basically to the telecom. So if I bring up the fax manager, which is the admin tool, just want to show you, you will actually notice two channels go off hook. And there they go. So it's sending on channel two. It's dialing the full 212-710-5098. In New York, we do need a one. So right fax automatically adds a one when needed. And then in my company, we're doing a four digit inbound route. So it passes the last four digits. It's coming in on channel one, 5098. 5098, if I sort by route code, is owned by me. And I'll go down just to show you. 5098 is right here, and there's Jeff. So while we're waiting to finish, let's see what it's going to do. It's, going to t it's telling me I was pulled in from Active Directory, to, that I can look at my account, but be careful if I change something, because next time it does a sync, it's going to overwrite it, which is okay. I just want to show you. So there's my 5098. That's how it knows how to deliver it to me. It's going to deliver a TIFF into Exchange with this to this email address. It's also going to do a few other things. It's going to deliver it to, a, to the network directory, which I'll show you. It's going to do an OCR, an optical character recognition, and turn it into a doc. Looks like it just finished. I'm getting my email, so let's take a look at, at all the, the inbound processes now. I'll minimize this. The first thing we do is notice there is a new inbound fax. It's the first one on top. It tells you the time and date it came in, fax number it came in from in the page count. If I click on it, we'll see cover sheet looks great and we'll see all the additional pages with the copy over it so this fax looks great I don't see a problem at all so that's the first place so the first place we see it is in the web the other place it's gonna get delivered to is a network folder so if I go on to the C drive there's a folder called faxes there's that user called Netter. I basically set up right fax so let me show you maybe we'll get a better feel if I show you so if I go to user Netter, let me do a search for it, Netter here, you'll see what happened is it's going to deliver it to the C drive, which I'll show you, and then it's going to deliver it to a folder called Faxes, and then it's going to create a folder with the user ID, that's tilde 7, and then create a folder with the date. So this is for organization, so if you receive a lot of inbound faxes to a network folder, you're not forced to put them all in one place. You can actually have write fax create folders based on metadata, dates, user IDs, and other fields to organize for you. Let's go back to it. So there's Netter, the user ID, and there it is, 2021, May 28th. There it is, 202105528, and I go in, and there's the doc. I don't have Word loaded on here, but it's, it's a Word doc, and here's the PDF. So it delivered a PDF, and you'll see the same thing we saw from the viewer. Let me zoom in a little bit, or zoom out a little bit. Let me make this a little bigger so you can see it. Okay, let me zoom out a little bit more. Okay, there's a cover sheet. Looks good. And we can go to the next page. Looks good, looks good, looks good. So that was the delivery into a network folder. Real easy. I'll just I'll minimize this. And last, I wanted to show you is some of the notifications in email. So if I go to the top here, you'll notice we have a bunch of messages. So the first one is telling me my fax is ready for preview. You saw that earlier. Since I was the sender, I have a customized notification that says my fax was sent to Jeff with some information. A lot of the stuff can be customized. You could put additional metadata between the dotted lines here. And then you have the transmission record the release record that I viewed it and released it, the conversion record, and the whole thing all the way from the beginning to end. Then it's telling me a fax has arrived because I also received it. I was sending it, but I'm also the recipient. This is just a text-based message about a fax that came in, and at this point I would notify her up the web or maybe go to the network folder and find the fax. So as you can see, we can deliver a message into email without delivering the fax. And last, you probably wouldn't turn this on, in a lot of government agencies, they don't want to deliver the faxes with the email. 
but I wanted to show you, you do have the ability to do it. So he has the TIFF image with, with the um, conversion record and the transmission record and remember the OCR so here's what it looks like. It's not going to look great but that's what it looks like when it converted it to Word so I can type, copy, paste, do anything I want because this is real data now. So that's all your email. You also have the ability to send from email. I'm not going to show that today. Uh, in most government agencies we you do not send faxes from email but we do have the ability to use a, a faxing or an addressing method so you can go something like that and that's how you can send from email if you wanted that ability and like before you can add your attachments and send very easy but I'm not sure if people in in the government would really turn that on let me get out of email and the other thing I'll show you real quick is just another way of sending that might be useful is the fax printer so you can go into any application that has a file print let's go into Excel I'll go into a new workbook add a little data and then I can go file print choose the right fax printer hit print and we will get a pop-up and here's where I can send the fax just like before but it already has the attachment of the Excel spreadsheet ready and you can add additional after that so it's kind of easy I didn't show you earlier I will show you quickly a phone book so we you can add fax numbers directly from a phone book phone books are extremely powerful they can be as easy as a right fax phone book where I just have an entry they could be a right fax phone book group where you have multiple entries at one click that's great if you have to do a fax blast so I hit test here and you'll see all the users in that group show up here we also have mappy integration so when I click the mappy button you could see what it does is it automatically brings up my Outlook address book contacts and I have one in here already so I can click on it but I also can go to a global address list or individual contacts so I'm gonna to go to my contact back click here hit OK and now I have a growing list of recipients so I have my original one my group and now my mappy I hit OK now I have five recipients I have my attachment very easy and it's ready to go I hit send and this fax is on its way so that concludes the demo part of this webinar so let's get back to the slide deck okay the next few slides will discuss deploying right fax in the cloud So deploying right facts in the cloud has many advantages. You eliminate many of the hassles and complexities of managing an on-premise infrastructure, eliminating the need for phone lines, and you improve high availability. You also eliminate the need for a disaster recovery plan. As you can see from the slide, moving right facts to the cloud does not prevent you from integrating with your on-premise MFPs, email systems, or even delivering a fax to a network folder. In most cases, moving right fax to the cloud will look and feel the exact same to your end users. It is important to note the infrastructure requirements when deploying right fax in the cloud. The most challenging requirement is usually the telecom integration. You must make sure that the SIP provider you choose will work reliably in the cloud and is not too complicated to implement. We have a few SIP providers that we can recommend. These providers specialize in running fax over IP using SIP trunks, and we have successfully implemented right fax in the cloud using these providers. Please contact your Advantage sales manager for information regarding these providers. Now let's talk about some right fax add-ons. Our FaxPulse Automated Inbound, also known as FaxPulse AI, is a great tool to verify your inbound faxing is working correctly. FaxPulse AI will track an inbound fax from the time your server receives the call all the way to various workflows, such as a network folder, email, or even a delivery into an application. FaxPulse AI will also send you an email if there is a phone line problem. FaxPulse Business Intelligence is an analytics and monitoring add-on for right fax. 
FaxPulse BI can be used to isolate issues with your right fax server. Issues can include transmission errors, conversion errors, or unavailable resources. FaxPulse BI can also be used to maximize the uses of your right fax channels based on time of day usage, individual or group usage, and day, week, month, or even year usage. It also includes a full-featured monitoring tool that will notify you if one of your right fax services are not running or if your queues are building higher than a set threshold. Since it is such a powerful and full-featured add-on, I would recommend you contact your sales associate for a demo of the product. That is really the only way you'll get to see all the features of this powerful tool. The Mail to Fax Connector allows you to fax enable any mail client and simplifies the addressing format when sending a fax bound email. For organizations that have a fleet of MFPs, this connector can be used to fax enable these devices while eliminating dedicated analog lines and increasing security and accountability of faxes. We will now talk about Advantage Support and Professional Services options. We offer API support to help you write your custom code for integration with any application or a third-party application you might want to fax from or receive faxes into. Our standard API support includes a one-year subscription to the OpenText WriteFax Developer Edition server and eight hours of Advantage support. We can help with the installation of your development server or with your code. Please contact Advantage for more information on pricing. This slide just shows all the ways our US-based certified support desk can help keep your WriteFax server up, running, and optimized. In the circle, you'll see our certified US-based engineers. You see that we offer e-health checks. We can always give you guys troubleshooting assistance. And we have a deep escalation path with many levels of engineers. So let me walk you through a typical upgrade PS project. We break the upgrades into four phases. Phase one includes assessments, proposals, and project planning. During this phase, we will document integrations, propose design improvements, and develop a solid project plan. Phase two entails a new installation of the WriteFax software, system configurations, and migrating existing users, faxes, and any other data. Phase three is for user accept acceptance testing. This is where you would test the new WriteFax system, resolve any issues we find during the testing, clean up the system, make sure it's ready to, to be cut over. And finally, phase four is a system cutover. This is when we schedule an outage, move the telecom connections and the client connections to the new system. Okay, let's go through takeaways from today's webinar. So the first thing we went through was that WriteFax is a very secure fax solution. WriteFax can encrypt all images with triple des 192 bit security. We can also encrypt all faxes in motion and we do have the ability to store the faxes in SQL. We talked about deploying WriteFax in the cloud and some of the advantages of having your WriteFax system based in a public or private cloud. And we also went through a little bit about our GSA certification, which includes our ability to sell WriteFax to the government, our professional services, some of the things we do for configuration, installation, licensing, and maintenance. Thousands of government organizations depend on WriteFax to provide robust configurability and flexible integrations that centralize their fax infrastructure, speed up their business processes, and increase security of the fax transmissions. Thanks, Jeff. As always, lots and lots of information covered in a short amount of time. So, uh, referring to uh, Advantage Technologies, we are a WriteFax distributor. In fact, we're the largest distributor in North America. We also maintain our own GSA contract. All WriteFax line items and support and professional services are included in our GSA contract. Uh, we've also worked with several other contract vehicles through many of our WriteFax resellers and other partners that have different contract vehicles, such as Nassau Soup, 
service disabled veteran owned small businesses, uh, maybe we be owned businesses, etc. Uh, we are a great partner. We've done a ton of these installs, um, both directly through our GSA contract and through uh, various other contract vehicles. So, um, be happy to work with you in any way. Uh, we have a lot of experience working through the procurement process. I know it can be cumbersome sometimes. Please reach out. We'd be very happy to walk you through and how we can help you out the best. Thanks so much. Thank <laughs> you.